So this is a Mead 844 Deluxe Telescope, and it has these two pins here, which match up with the Mead ETX Telescope line, um, but don't match up with it, anything else in the world. So I am going to drill a hole right in the center point, because in the back middle there's this bit of metal, and we are going to put a 3 8 through 16 bolt right through the center of that guy, and my hope here is not only will I be able to mount telescopes to the front face of this, but potentially I can take this plate off of this tripod and maybe mount it to a pier with a 3 16 by 8 bolt in through this way, and then still be able to mount my ETX-125 on the top of this, so think of it as an adapter plate for other piers and, and tripods. So there's three points of contact. I'll have to unhook this one, which is real easy. And then those guys there, I'll just need a wrench to take these bolts and nuts off. So I could have taken this thing out of the bottom by hand, but I want that guy unencumbered by loose bits hanging around. So I'm actually taking this post out with just a flathead screwdriver. So that guy will release there. And now I just have those two bolts. I don't know what the official size is, but I found a 10 millimeter held the nut just fine and 9 16 turned the bolt. There are three washers in here, one between the head of the bolt and this arm, one between the two arms, and one between this arm and the nut. Now on my particular mounting plate, one of these guys is spring-loaded, and the other guy just kind of floats around in there. I could have been that the previous owner lost a spring-loaded part for that guy, um, but I want to take off this spring-loaded bit because it's either take this guy off so it'll sit flat, or if it looks like there's just a little clip ring in there, um, and if I can get that clip ring off, it looks like it will... Um, have a spring that comes out and maybe that's how the previous owner got in this situation. So the one that doesn't have a spring and a clip ring on it just unscrews out of that guy. So my plan is to try to pry this clip off with two screwdrivers in an attempt to catch it in case it flies anywhere. I'm going to put this strong magnet right there so hopefully the clip will stick to the magnet. All right, the magnet worked really well to keep that thing from flying off. I actually used a dental pick pulled over as a hook um, to just clip inside there and pull it off. Um, once you do that, this little bit here should hopefully come out, just lift up and out. Turn it upside down, flip it out, there we go. All right, so we get just a washer, and then there's a spring in there. So there's the spring, the washer, and this little clip, which we're gonna all put on that magnet there. And then this guy should come out. Just like the other one. So I'm kind of thinking that the other one should have a spring and a washer and a clip as well. Um, so if I can find those parts, I might add it. All right, so now we have this bare piece. This piece here is cast aluminum. You know, it's not magnetic at all. So it's gonna be pretty easy to drill and tap. I use a center punch and a hammer to put a little mark right in the center there. So for a 3 8 by 16, they want us to use a 5 16th drill. And just as a double check, the uh, tap does look slightly larger than that drill. We're going to start with the 5 16 so We're gonna start with a small hole and work our way up, even though this is aluminum. And because I'm a distrustful person um, in general, I am taking my 3 8 by 16 coarse thread die here um, because I only have one of those parts, and I'm going to put it onto this known good bolt just to make sure that, yes, that is 3 8 by 16 threads per inch. So I definitely want to clamp this guy down so it wouldn't move around. Front clamp's fine, back clamp doesn't quite have enough reach in the throat there. And that's how I have two wood screws holding it down, plus this guy. This guy's probably not needed now that I got the wood screws in, but those guys at least keep it from pushing up like this and angling. We have thread cutting fluid, which is basically oil, and eye protection. And this is why you always turn on the drill and take a close look at that drill bit before you start drilling. I don't know if you can see it there, but that tip is wiggling all over the place. But it's not because it's not in here correctly. The top bit is just fine. It's just that the drill bit is bent. If you watch here as I turn it, um, the tip is moving left to right significantly right there. 
it's moving all over the place. So that bit is bent. A little more confirmation you can put on a flat surface and roll it and watch that tip jump away from the flat surface. So let's try a slightly different size drill bit here. Luckily our final size is perfect still. Now that was my one quarter. Now it is my scrap metal. So let's go down a size. We are going to try 16 64ths. want to jump super far here I'm gonna take this guy out too and we might step through a couple of drill bits all right that drill bit looks a lot better I may not need to go through this many steps but it makes it nice and easy and this will be the final step It seems a shame to have gone to all this trouble to fixture this guy and not use it for tapping. So I'm just going to crank this guy down low enough that I can uh, get a tap in there easily and tap it right here. That hole is a little off center, but luckily for me, the exact center position doesn't matter for astronomy, just the fact that it's straight through and equatorially aligned. All right, once I got that tap fully threaded in the hole, I want to take it out so I can see how far along I am. I'm going to clamp it vertically so I can see both sides now. So at some point you can tell it's no longer cutting threads and you're just chasing the threads through. Um, and at that point, you're basically done making these threads. Still have to clean up a lot of aluminum and chips though. So the easy way to measure this without math is to use this probe down here and basically stick it all the way through and then use this guy here to push it back for that bolt length. Now on this guy here it's 0.96 inches so basically a one inch bolt. So you can also verify the threading on this by using the original tripod here um, and you can see that that guy screws in there very nicely so that is the 3 8 by 16 threading there. Now we need to take this and wash it off with some detergent to get rid of all that cutting fluid and with basically oil. The cutting fluid is oil. So I've realized that these guys need to come down pretty darn low if the C-Star is going to rotate directly on top of this thing. Um, and if I put the spring clip back in, it's going to spring up too high, so I'll need definitely something big to keep the C-Star up off that. Um, so what I've decided to do is to just use this leveler here. Um, so I'm just going to bolt that leveler straight on there and that'll raise the C-Star up enough that it won't have to, I won't have to worry about it hitting any of these things. Um, I guess potentially it will let me adjust the angle just slightly, but I don't plan on doing that. I plan on locking these guys in place and using it in a locked position, just as a basically little two inch pier. Um, and because of that, I've decided to get the one inch screw um, or bolt because the one inch bolt will be plenty good because I'm not planning on having any washers or anything there. And that way I'll get to keep the spring clip here because that spring's kind of nice when you're hooking up my Mead ETX onto this guy. But if you wanted to do this and didn't have a little two inch pier like that, um, you might want to get like a two inch bolt and a big stack of washers to make a little pier just to, to make sure the C-Star clears these guys here. Unless you're taking those out entirely. So with these springs in here, um, those guys stick up a good half inch, you know, 0.43 inches. So you'll want a pier half inch up to get the C-Star above those guys. Maybe a little more than half an inch because the C-Star legs stick down just slightly. I'm not sure exactly if the legs will clear those guys when they're rotating or not, but uh, plan on, you know, probably three quarters of an inch up here for you know, use with the C-Star. Incidentally, I do recommend this Tecton uh, tap and die set. They make one in Imperial and one in Metric.
So I purchased a 1 inch long 3 8 by 16 socket head cap screw with knurled edges here. And that is good enough to basically insert and take out by hand as long as I don't tighten it down too tight. Um, you can see because it's in a good, you know, half to three quarters inch of aluminum in here, it has plenty of strength on that bolt. So it sticks out up here, you know, a good, maybe not quite half an inch, but pretty close to half an inch. Now, we do have these spring things we're trying to get around. I already have this leveler, so I'm just going to be using this leveler as my pier, essentially, to just make sure that the C-Star legs aren't touching this disc. Don't have to worry about these spring clips. Um, and I can adjust in a fine adjust here if I really want to. Now, normally, I would spin the tripod, but as the tripod gets bigger, at some point you have to spin the C-Star. There we are. So I'm at 28 north, so I have a pretty decent angle here on my equatorial wedge, but you can adjust this for any other location. And the nice thing about my Mead 844 Deluxe tripod here um, is that I am not at all worried about the weight because the C-Star is significantly less weight than my ETX-125. In fact, the only downside is I can't use both telescopes at the same time now. Alright, I went to a hardware store. A 6mm washer fits here just perfectly, but it's not as big around as I would like. 6mm fender washer is too big. This was a 4mm fender washer, which the exterior size is just about right. The interior size um, was okay after I drilled it out. Did a messy job of that. And then I got an E-clip, and I'm not even sure if this is the right size, but it's the closest thing I found, um, and I'm going to try snapping it on and see how that works. And I just had a random spring from the drawer. All right, so after we get this guy through, we'll put the spring on, we have our washer on, And then we need to push the washer down slightly, far enough to get the clip into place. I'm not certain if this would be easier if I made it flat or not. So that clip is what holds this washer down. Now I need to push the clip into place, and I'm sure there's a specialized tool that would be better for what I'm doing than this, but... This guy is definitely spring-loaded now. So I guess it's just as good as the other one. It feels like the spring tension's a little more. That's just because I didn't choose the exact right spring. Clip seems to be holding on. Doesn't look to, like the clip's going to come off, and that washer's fitting just fine. All right, so two spring-loaded ones now. 